Welcome to this how-to video on speedometer charts. To create a meter or a gauge chart, you need to begin with two data points. One is an actual value and the other is a target value against which you will measure the actual performance. So here we have two data points in Excel, 5000 for the target and 4000 for the actual. And we're going to look at creating a chart like this that will that will show us how much the target has moved or how much the actual has moved against a target. So uh, right now it's at 4000. If I change that to 2000, you will see the needle swinging to the 2000 mark. And you here we have five five slices in this dial, each of which is about one is is 1000 in value. And the needle will therefore move uh, from zero on one end of the scale to 5000 on the other end of the scale. Now these are the only two real life or real data value points that you have. To create a meter like this, you've got to arrange this data in an arrangement that will give you the illustration of a meter. So everything else that you see here on the spreadsheet in this part of the spreadsheet is an arrangement of the original data arranged to create the illustration of a, of a meter or a gauge. And um, we're going to walk through the steps on how to do that. One more demonstration before we begin is uh, what happens when you when the actual exceeds the target? So when the actual exceeds the target, uh, one of the drawbacks of charts like this is that these kind of charts cannot depict visually when the actual exceeds the target. But you can bring it. You can you can add to the display through an annotation, and uh, that's going to look like something like this. So if I change the actual value to five thousand five hundred, you will see that the meet, the needle goes to 200%, but you get an annotation here which says target exceeded by 500, which is driven by a formula and it's linked to that formula. So we're going to see how to do these steps. Now there are many different ways that you can create a meter chart like this. Um, you can use pie charts, you can use donut charts, you can use other kinds of charts with polar coordinates and so on. I've selected the donut chart method because it is one of the simplest methods of creating this chart. So I'm going to move this chart aside and we'll begin by creating a chart from scratch. And I'm also going to delete that formula in there so that we can do everything from scratch. So let me go back to 4000 as the actual value and walk you through the steps of creating these two columns which are essential in creating the illustration of a meter. The first column here is our meter plot. That's the one that's actually going to show us the needle moving. And you can see that it, it comprises four slices. The first of these is the actual performance. Now that's a value that you cannot change. That's a, that's a hard fact. And that comes from the real life actual value up above. If we edit that cell, you can see that it's a link to the actual value. So that value cannot change. That's a given. The second is a very thin slice which is going to represent a needle. So you can see here in this uh, completed example here that needle is nothing but a slice of the donut chart and the value of 50 is uh, controls how wide the needle is. The larger you make the needle, the more inaccurate it's going to be. So it's up to you to decide how much you want it to be. In this case, the value of 50 works uh, nicely and you can see we have a nice looking needle there uh, with a value of 50. The next is balance. That's simply the amount of travel left for the needle. So that's about th that's this portion here. That's the amount of travel left for the needle. And finally, we have a balancing slice here, which is 5000. Now remember, in a speedometer or a meter chart, we are only talking about a semicircle, which is uh, one half of a donut. There is another half of the donut, which completes the circle here. And right now it's not visible that has been made transparent or invisible uh, through formatting, but it's there. And that is this slice. So you have to have a slice here that balances this slice because so these make up the two semicircles of the donut chart. One of the things that that is essential here is that the balancing slice at the bottom here has to be equal 
to the target value. So if you double click on this cell, you'll see that it says equals B10 and it is linked to the target value above. So these are the two slices that cannot that you cannot change arbitrarily. These are given. One is the actual and one, these are driven by the real life values. The other two are things that you can change. Changing the, the, the size of the needle is one. The other is the balance. Now the balance is driven by a formula. The formula says target value minus the actual minus the needle and that will give us the amount of travel left for the needle. So that's an essential part of this data arrangement as well. The balance is a computed value and uh, it has to account for the actual and the needle. The second column here is simply the amount of slices you want in the dial. So right now we have five slices of 1000 each. Again here you you can change this if you like, but you must make sure that it equals 5,000 because there is a balancing slice here of 5,000 right at the bottom of this dial. And that also has to be equal to the target. So if you double click on this cell, you'll see that it says equals B10, which is exactly equal to the target. And these must not exceed the target value. If you want less slices, you want four slices, you can change them, but you've got to make them 1,250 so that it will give you a nice semicircle. Now that we've seen how the data is to be set up, now let's go ahead and create this meter chart. So we'll select our data arrangement and go to insert, go to pie charts, and we'll click on donut charts. Now that we have the, you can see here with the two donuts that have been created, you have an outer ring, which is going to become the dial, and you have the inner ring, which is going to become the meter plot. So first thing to do here is to rotate uh, this donut so that the two slices, with the balancing slices are at the bottom half of the donut chart. So to do that, we're going to right click and go to format data series. And in the format data series options, we're going to change the angle of the first slice to 270. So as soon as I do that, you can see those two slices are at the bottom now. The next thing I'm going to do is to change the donut whole slice to about 10%. So there you can see it's already beginning to resemble a meter. Now we've got to make these two bottom slices transparent. And to do that, you give them a fill color of no fill. Now, once again, if you don't have the options docked at the side, you can right click on the slices and go to format data series to do that. But remember, we're trying to do it to a single data point only. We want to do it only to the slice at the bottom. So here's how you do it. You need to select only that one single slice. So you click on the slice you want, and the first time you click, all slices will be selected. Then you wait for a couple of seconds, and you click on the slice again, and now only th that slice is selected. And when that one slice is selected, you can go to the Home tab, go to the Fill options, and select No Fill. And so that slice is no longer visible. I'm going to do it for the second uh, balancing slice as well. I'll click on the inner donut. Once again, I have to wait for a few seconds, click on the slice I want again, go back to the Home tab and click on No Fill. Now we've also got to make the actual and the balance disappear and have only the needle visible. Now the needle, I want the needle to be visible in black. Uh, this particular version of Excel that I'm using has selected a default outline of white. I'm gonna change it to black so that my needle will show up uh, against a white background. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here so that I can select that needle uh, properly. And here we go, I'm gonna select the single slice 
for the actual first go back to the home tab and change it to no fill then I'm going to select the needle itself and that's the reason for zooming in so that it's easier to select that thin slice and now that I have that slice selected I'm going to the chart tools and click on the format tab and change the shape outline to black or any other color that you like and finally then the last slice which is the balance I click on that one I go to the home tab and I change it to no fill so that tab is not visible as well and you can see that we now have uh, only the needle visible and then I'm going to zoom out now to do the remainder of the steps so there's our speedometer with a needle and you can already see that if I change this value to 2000 the needle swings back and forth now the next thing to do here is to draw this little circle in the center and that's nothing but an annotation so you select the chart like this make sure that the chart is selected go to the insert menu and on the insert menu click on shapes select a circle shape or an oval and just draw it where you want it and then move it into place and once again you can change this formatting to any way you like so you can give it a gradient formatting or any other style that uh, you find appropriate now the next thing to do here is to get rid of this legend because we don't need it so we we'll click on the legend and press the delete key so there we have the legend gone and now it gives us room to create our annotation so essentially we've completed the speedometer the rest is the rest of the items that we're going to add to this are all embellishments I'm going to add a chart title here sales meter 2017 now let's take a look at what happens when the target level has been exceeded so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the meter the actual value from 2000 to 6000 and as soon as I change it to 6000 you will see that the needle swings to a hundred percent but it doesn't really tell us that the target has been exceeded that's as I mentioned that's one of the limitations of charts like this that they cannot by themselves depict when the when the actual value has been when the target value has been exceeded you can through some creative programming through some creative formulas provide an extra slice in your donut charts to depict by how much the target has been exceeded but our objective when we to create in creating this exercise was to provide a simple way of creating a meter chart so uh, without getting into too, ma too many uh, computational changes or too many formula changes we're going to see as yes, how we can we can um, uh, make this chart tell us that the target has been exceeded and we're going to do that by means of a linked annotation to create a linked annotation uh, there are two steps the first step is to create the annotation itself on the chart and the next step is to link it to a formula driven cell so let's create the annotation first to create the annotation we will select the chart make sure the chart is selected and then go to the insert menu and select a text box so I've done that and once I click on text box I will draw my text box here within the chart that's created my annotation and I'm just going to add some dummy text for now just to be able to to find my text box so I'm just going to put sample text for now and now I'm going to select my text box now I'm going the next step is to link this annotation to a cell and then we'll format it later to make it look nice so I'm going to select this text box as an object and that's important it must not be uh, you must not be editing the the annotation so right now if you can see the border here is a dotted border that means I am editing the text box but I'll click on the border itself and it becomes a solid border so that means the object is selected once the object is selected I will click inside the formula bar type an equal sign and click on the cell that I want to link it which in this case is C11 and I must press enter so I press enter on my keyboard and that text box is now linked 
to cell C11. As you can see, the moment I pressed enter, uh, there, there was nothing displayed in the text box simply because there is nothing in that cell. Now let's add a formula to that cell to display an annotation or to display a message in that cell. So I'm going to zoom in here. I'm going to add a formula which is uh, uses, uh, it's a simple formula that uses the if function to add a comment here only if the target has been exceeded. So we're going to begin with the if function. So we'll start with uh, the if function and we'll say if actual exceeds target, then we can simply say target exceeded or we can say target exceeded by how much. So I'd like to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a formula here which will say target exceeded by how much. So we would begin with the text and say target exceeded by and space. Close the text and now we'll add it to a formula. And the formula will say actual minus target. So that'll tell us target exceeded by how much. And once you've done that, we're going to say put a comma. Value if false is if the target has not been exceeded, I don't want to display anything. So I'm going to put a null string here, which is open quotes, close quotes, close the bracket and press enter. So here you can see it says target exceeded by 1000. And if I zoom out to see my sales meter again. You can see the annotation now says target exceeded by 1000. And I next, all I need to do is to format this to make it look nice. So once again, I will select my annotation here and go to the home tab, change the color to red, change it to bold, center it, and increase the size to whatever size I feel looks nice. So there we go. And perhaps that's a bit too large, so I'm going to reduce the font size a little bit so that it looks a little uh, better on screen. There we are. We have uh, the, the annotation now displaying nicely. And I'm going to zoom out to 100% so you can see how that looks. So if I change the value, the actual value again to about 4,000, you will see that the annotation disappears and the needle swings back to the value of the actual. And the moment it is exceeded, let's put 5,500. The needle swings to 100%, but you get the annotation on screen saying that target exceeded by 500. So essentially, these are the steps to create a simple speedometer or a gauge chart and to add an annotation to get around one of its limitations of not being able to display an actual when it exceeds the target. You can add several more embellishments to this, change the background, change the color, change the number of slices in the dial, and so on. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found it useful to your work.